Hey guys, how you doing? I'm HexDSL, hello. Um, this is, we're going to talk about Tooth & Tail today. Tooth & Tail is an RTS game. Uh, it's an RTS with sort of streamlined controls, and it uses like a, com a command character. Um, <laughs> and the command character works kind of like the dude in Brutal Legend does, where you have a physical dude that's like, you go over there. You know, so which means that instead of selecting units and sending them over the place, you just walk your command character around to do shit. You just, your command character just runs around telling people what to do, which does sort of mean that you're always... Um, you're always sort of you're right here, you know. You're like you're like your your sphere of influence is sort of where your character is. So if something's happening way off in the distance. You have to run over there to deal and deal with it, which kind of like interesting way of doing it. Didn't enjoy it that much in Brutal Legend. Um, I like the uh, you know what it was doing before it started going to an RTS. But this game being built from the ground up to be an RTS, it seemed to be working really nicely, and I get a better idea of actually what Brutal Legend was going for. But anyway, I digress. The game's been out since the 12th of September. It's getting very positive. It's like 87%. Yeah, 87% positive on um on Steam. I forgot what Steam was called then. Wow. And it's priced at £14.99. My copy of the game was provided to me by the developers. Um, and yeah, they're the guys who made Monaco. Um, they're called Pocket Watch Games. Monaco's the interesting game if you haven't played it. It's a weird heist game. Pretty cool. Uh, the soundtrack's available for £3.99. And yeah, there's, there's not a lot else I can say. It, it requires nothing to run. A computer will run this. Uh, so let's have a look at the game itself. Now this is the hub area. It's called the Warren. And Again, it's worth saying, guys, I've played like four missions of this. I'm very early in the game. This is an early impressions video. I'm going to come back to it when I've sort of got a lot further in it and I can tell you more about it. But at the moment, this is early impressions. I don't want people in comments going, you haven't played enough to have an opinion. Not a review, guys. First impressions. Um, so let's have a look around the Warren first. This is the Warren. Physical characters here have missions that you can replay with space bar, um, which is fine. A fine way of doing it. I prefer mission list, but a fine way of doing it. Lovely pixel art. Um, there's a there's, there's, there's a thing up happening up here, and I take it this warrant sort of sort of expands as you go in because there's a locked door and there's a few places that may be entrance into something else. So I assume this warrant's gonna gonna extend. Um, but I know there's multiple factions of the game, so you probably go onto that when you finish this particular faction. Um, but yeah, nice, 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 interesting, interesting little world they've created here of oddballs and weirdos. Now. Let's replay a mission. This is the first mission here. We're going to replay this mission. Um, I'm not going to go into the plot, but basically, animals want to kill other animals to eat them. Um, they factioned off, and this is the first faction we're playing here, which are called Long Coats. And they're fantastic because they've got long coats, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and this one, this just gives an overview of what's going to happen with some really nice hand-drawn artwork. Um, the game is pixel art, and then you've got this stuff overlaid over the top of it, all the UI elements. I quite would have liked to have seen sort of uh, owlboy style high pixel artwork for this stuff rather than hand drawn stuff. But nothing wrong with what they've done. It's really pretty, really nicely put together. This guy's got an acorn in his, in his whiskey bottle. That's badass. Um, and let's just start the game, shall we? Okay, so this is the game. Uh, what we have to do here, this is our command character that's carrying this banner. And then we use the command character to action everything we want to do. So. I'm going to just build a warren. A warren is essentially a factory in any other RTS. So hit space bar, that's creating a factory. That will generate three of these squirrel dudes called the Distillery Brothers. Um, and I can build another one of these if I want. As soon as, you know, as soon as one's built, I can get enough money. I can build more. Wait, what? Can I build more? Can I build another types as well? Oh, man. I've got to build another one as well of these first. Yeah, there we go. So these guys are called the Freight Union. I can change between these two selections with E and Q or use the mouse wheel. I prefer E and Q um, and it's space to action. So if I'm anywhere, whatever I'm doing, like here, space will build another warren. Um, and that's, you know, that that's how you do it. Space is your interact. But it is contextual. So if I've got a new one of these, um, one of these mills and I need to build farmland, I'll stand in the farmland and hit space bar because space is always contextual for an action as to where the character physically is. And um, we'll wait for our army to build up a wee bit before we go any further. Can we build any more of these? No. No money. No money. Uh, and oh, and also the resource down there next to my face, like like there. There you go. That's food. Food is the only resource you have to worry about. If you've got no food, you've... Wow. Someone's actually pressed subscribe or I'm not even streaming. And that's just come from this video. So whoever that dude is, congratulations. You make a guest appearance. I should probably turn that off while I'm recording videos. It's fine. We'll just roll with it. Yay, building warrens. 
building warrants, use some food. Now, how do we order our troops? Well, we use the right mouse button to call them to us. We hold down the right mouse button to sort of get them to come behind me and stop attacking. And we can use the left mouse button to select a specific unit and then order it. But I just, at the moment where I'm in the game, again, not playing loads of it. I'm just using the right mouse button to slam, you know, to, to slam attacks in the right direction. Which, in all fairness, does seem to be working for me at the moment. Um, and we've got a few of these units. Now, let's get, get all our, our dudes together and go kill enemy birdies. Yeah. Have it. You can see our hero character has got health of his own. Don't know what happens when he dies. I assume the game's over. I haven't actually had him die yet. Shit. It's not hard because his health regenerates. I don't think the particular risk here is, is putting him at risk. I think it's more about the dudes you've got at risk rather than... Yeah. Rather than trying to sort of make your commander be at risk. This ain't, this ain't, this, this ain't Total Annihilation, you know. This, <laughs> this is not Total Annihilation. But what it is, is a really nice streamlined version of RTS. Shit. And I say streamlined because you can only act, you can only ever... Oh, let's just get... Let's use the F1 button to get rid of that pop-up that was there. Uh, yeah. Yes. There you go. Fuck off. Go on. There we go. Going around into stuff. This blue edge round here is um, the sphere of influence of our army. So we can build inside the blue bit, but we can't build outside the blue bit, which is... Which seems reasonable, you know? Like, like it seems like an, like an easy thing. Um, oh, these farms as well. These farm out. These farms can become barren. Um, and then the windmill itself is useless except as a spawn point. Because one of the abilities you've got is if you hold that R, you can uh, burrow. And, oh, unfortunately, I haven't got anywhere else. But if you've got multiple windmills, you can travel between them once you've burrowed. Which is like a fast travel. Which is a good way of dealing with the fact that you only ever can only ever influence where your commander is now. Um, these levels are procedurally generated, which I'm not a fan of, as you guys know. I've said many times, not a fan of procedural for level generation. I like it for assets. Like, you know, where are the mining points going to be? Procedural. But the actual levels, I'd like to see designed manually. Come on, there we go. There's one of them bird fuckers. Go on, kill him. Kill the bird fuckers. There you go. Woo! Killing bird fuckers. Looking around. Oh, more bird fuckers. Not a fan of the bird fuckers. There we go. And we should come across, again, because it's procedural, it's not like you can know a map because, you know, you're always just exploring. But uh, we're looking basically for other windmills. We're looking to, to de defeat the enemy mills while same time making them ours so we can produce more resources. I'm not sure if you can do that in this mission, actually. This is an early mission. I'm not sure it allows for, um, I'm not sure it allows for taking over windmills. That's in the later ones, though. Still great, though, because you can have multiple windmills and just travel between them, which is great. And that means when they go barren, you have to move forward and look in different directions. This level it's regenerated is huge. There we go. Enemy bullet hive. Let's just kill, let's send our dudes to kill their bullet hive. Yeah, go on, have it. Yeah, I find the uh, the overlay being hand drawn against the pixel background not particularly pleasing. I must say it's not something that I'm particularly enamoured with, but it does work very well. If people aren't quite as big a fans as pixels as I am, it's probably something they'll really appreciate because it sort of breaks it up visually quite nicely. Um, I don't need it broken up though. I'm, I'm all pixels all the time. Pixels and neon, my two favourite things. Yep. We're killing stuff. Oh shit! I didn't expect that. Are they right next to each other? Look, which is the problem with procedural, because that's not particularly smart design. It's just procedurally gone. Slap, slap. You there, you there. You know, because the logic behind procedural generation is always, always confusing. You never, th you always think a human would not have put these there. They would not have structured out like that. Yay! That is the level already. That is essentially the game. Um, and then as, as you go on, you will not more and more stuff through the campaign. And as I've said, I've not played loads of it. Played about two hours of it. Definitely, definitely feel ready to play more. I'm just going to replay this mission here. Just to show you the early portion so you can get a feel for what it looks like with more stuff going on. Load times are good as well. So here's, here's, our, uh, here's our, uh, our dude. Oh, and this is, this is cool. There are people just hanging out when you spawn up and you can recruit them for reasonable amounts of money. We'll, uh, we'll make some farmland. Do, 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 do. Farmland, there we go. And we can see we start earning money now. The more farm you've got, obviously, the more money you earn. And we'll uh, we'll put some hive. We'll put one of these hives for the uh, for the smaller units down as soon as we've got some cash. Which is, you know, it costs 60. We've currently got 40. So we just go away. We just go away a little bit. Just go away a little bit. That guy's attacking. Don't worry about that guy. He'll get killed soon enough. Yeah, yeah. Them little fuckers with the flags, they run through. They just they just annoy you more than anything else. They're just really annoying. You grow like I think the problem is in the first bit here is you can't be too fast. You've grow like you've grow give yourself time to get you know something to go and attack with. 
Um, and I think it's best to spend your money on these things rather than hire these guys straight off the bat. Because obviously these things generate more units when units die, which seems seems fine. Come on, you buggers. Maybe it's his time to hire this guy. Come on then. So we've got our two guys that's going to... Oh, shit. Right there. Right there. Did not expect that. Um, this is another thing. The game feels frantic all the time. Everything you do in this game feels feels like it's urgent. There's this total sense of urgency. And that sense of urgency is sort of really created. Um, is really created by the fact that things are like claustrophobic almost. This guy is pissing me off though. I'm going to build a bullet hive just to take him down next time he comes in. If you spend all your money on bullet hives, you've got nothing to attack with. And then you run out of food, you die. Found out the hard way. Uh, so you, as much as bullet hives seem like the obvious solution to most problems, they're probably not the best thing to do. Because bullet hives will eventually run out. You'll, you know, you'll run out of everything else. Come on. Go army. Just clicking the right button to get them to attack. That guy's pissing me off. Bullet hive will take care of him eventually. So now we can go and get this one. Just telling my guys to ta attack it. Oh, we've got a plot of gold. Gold. We've got a lot of food coming now. So we can start. Yay. So we can start um, investing in some more stuff, I think. Including flamethrower dudes. Let's put a bullet hive there. That should help. Uh, come on. Come on. The controls are really nice. Just WSAD to move around. Left, you know, the buttons to uh, move. I just, I do feel like my mouse is somewhat claustrophobic. I feel like my mouse should do something. Feels odd that he doesn't just use all keyboard. But I'm sure he'll play ground controller. Die. There you go. Fuck it. Have it. Come on. There we go. We'll, uh... Claim this mill. Now, there we go. Now I can show the quick travel, which is which is really smart. As soon as this mill finishes building, that is. I'm sure these dudes will be fine. Come on. This dude's pissing me off. I'm just going to have all the bullet hives to murder that one fucking dude. There we go. So now, if I borrow... So if I'm over here, right, and I borrow here... Um, I can quickly switch to either one. So I'm over here at the moment, borrowing, so I can just go there, and I'm instantly there. And uh, with a very small dig time, I can be over there now. Um, and because I'm directing the combat, you know, I'm actually directing the combat, and this character's needed to sort of manage the combat, um, that ability to fast travel between between the uh, the mills is really smart. And it, it just makes the game a little bit faster. And that's all what this game seems to be about, is speed. Fuck, there's bird. Fuckers are coming for me. Yeah, I'm not good at this. I'm, I never said I was good at this. <laughs> so I'm going to stop. I'm just going to stop now. Gonna stop now. Options are quite thin in the ground for the game. Um, if we have a look here, we've got full screen. Uh, we've got, also got windowed borderless. Do have to restart the game, actually, when you change them, which is annoying. Because I was trying to work out. I felt like I had a missing mouse cursor when I first loaded. And I was like, oh, I better, I better see if this is something that's happening. But no, there's no mouse cursor to have. So that was weird. <laughs> resolution, obviously. Resolution options. Graphics quality. Yep. Low, medium, high, or ultra. I'm sure it's fine, ultra. And video quality, HD or disabled. I assume this is for cutscenes. Um, not that I've seen, I've seen one cutscene, which is the intro one. So I assume that is for cutscenes. I have yet to figure out where it does, though. And other, yep. High unit portraits, which is the things there. Because obviously, that's another thing I should say. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's, you see these portraits down here? So when I select these different things, the portraits are huge. And they seem to really sort of tick a lot of screen real estate, which worries me. Because I feel like perhaps that's a waste of screen space. Um, but apparently you can turn them off, which is nice. Oh, and I've just uh, made the mistake of moving my mouse outside the window, which is annoying, which is what I said. It doesn't make any effort to capture the mouse. And we'll uh, fix our farms and get our dudes back and start earning again. So, before I embarrass myself any further, I'm just going to have a quick look in key bindings, which are all there. And again, nice, lot of thought going to control by the looks of it. So I'm going to try it on an Xbox controller or a Steam controller. Which is nice. Um, and it does say zoom in and zoom out as well on brackets. But uh, on bracket, I'm the square brackety things. Which uh, doesn't seem to do anything. But possibly it's because I'm too early in the game for the map to be big enough to make it worthwhile. Which would make sense to me. Definitely would make sense to me. Uh, the sound's all good. All in all, can't wait to play more. I think that's what it comes down to. I just, I really just, at this point, I'm feeling ready to play more of this game. Um... But uh, I can't see how I can't see how I'm not going to sort of enjoy the rest of the campaign because even though I was failing awfully there because I'm talking, it was still uh, I've I've already done that mission. I didn't I found it challenging enough to be interesting but not like ridiculous. Um, so if I can get through it with my average as hell skills, that'll be a testament. I haven't tried the multiplayer at all, ranked, unranked, offline. Hmm. 
to offline attack is split screen. Seems reasonable to me. The game help, yeah, keyboard controls, how to play, unit help, yeah. Well, everything in here is basically great. I can't really think of anything mean to say about the game. Not that I'm trying to, but uh, there's no there's no negatives to be had here. The game's a lot of fun. Um, as I said, the overlay uh, the overlay here with the, with the hand drawn graphics against pixel art, not really to my taste, but certainly something that that works and I think most people would enjoy. Um, it's like a transitional game. Like they went pixels in Monaco. Now it's like pixels and hand drawn. Will the next game be all artsy hand drawn? And it's like this is their like evolution. It wasn't it, mind you, Monaco wasn't even pixels, was it? It was sort of that weird. Yeah, that, that weird sort of neon map thing going on, which I liked. Let's play some more Monaco. But anyway, I'm rambling now. I've been rambling for a while. Um, I like this game, basically, is what it comes down to. It's really interesting. Um, and as I'm currently on a bit of a strategy slash tactics binge, this fits in nicely with what I'm doing now. Uh, so thank you for watching. I've been HexDSL. Hopefully you've enjoyed my new artwork. Speaking of artwork, um, yeah, if you can, we can thank Cybris UK of the LinuxGamer.co.uk um, for making that because it's fab. Um, so I'm Hex. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.